1919, only a little over a hundred years ago, Stamford Raffles, a far-sighted official of the famed East India Company, realized Britain's great need of an important base in the Indies for future expansion of Eastern trade, and against advice and wishes of his company, secured by agreement from the Sultan of Johor, an island off the extreme southern tip of the Malay Peninsula, and here founded Singapore, a settlement destined to become, within less than a century, one of the greatest commercial ports and the most strategic point of the British Empire. Singapore, but 77 miles north of the equator, is at the crossroads of Australia and India, South Africa and China, and as military base and home of the combined British Far Eastern fleets, is rightly considered the Gibraltar of the East. Garrisoned at Singapore are regular seasoned troops composed of European, Indian, and Malay units. and most efficient air force in the Far East, both as to personnel and equipment, is stationed at Singapore, with aerodromes unrivaled in the Orient. The busy harbor and waterfront, the fine buildings and crowded modern streets bespeak her importance as a free port and the greatest transshipment center in the East, where practically everything that is made can be purchased duty-free. With the result, Singapore is one of the cheapest shopping centers in the entire world. Much of the plan of the present city is due to its founder, Stamford Raffles, and the square which is the heart of its business life bears his name. On it face many banks, offices, retail and commercial establishments, and through it during the business day passes a steady stream of pedestrian and vehicular traffic. To protect motor cars against the direct rays of the equatorial sun, cloth covers are often used. Of Singapore's estimated population of half a million, more than 55% are Chinese, though the majority are coolies and laborers, and their commercial interests are vast and of the greatest importance. Some originally immigrants from China, and others descendants of the pioneers who came to trade when Raffles established the settlement. In addition to the great percentage of Chinese, Singapore's population is also composed of numerous other Orientals and Occidentals from all parts of the world. And it is claimed no less than 26 languages are used in conducting normal business. The cosmopolitan population works and lives together in harmony and religious freedom. In one street is seen an imposing Chinese temple, and within a short distance stands an elaborately carved Hindu place of worship. Muslims, and there are many, 
bow toward Mecca beneath snow-white domes of a mosque of the Prophet. Dividing the city, Singapore's river presents an always changing scene of busy activity. Many small lighters and trading junks tie up at K's to unload or discharge their multitudinous wares, or lie empty in midstream awaiting cargo. Shipping activity is even heavier upstream, where the river is narrower and the quays more congested. Chinese believe their boats must see where they are going, so large eyes are placed upon the bow. In pleasing contrast to the crowded oriental sections are the open spaces of the European areas, with wide, splendidly paved boulevards, tree-shaded avenues, and modern buildings. Paralleling the harbor is Connaught Road, one of the finest drives in the city and comparable to any similar thoroughfare in Europe. At the edge of Raffles Plain, and fronting eastward to the sea, stands the imposing cenotaph, silent memorial to Singapore's World War dead. Overlooking the plain is the Victoria Memorial Hall, and nearby, the stately municipal building, one of Singapore's newest constructions. Adjacent is St. George's Anglican Cathedral, also facing the plain. All parts of the city are served and connected by well-paved roads, convenient arteries for those who live in the suburbs or in the beautiful residential section of Tanglin. The governor's mansion stands upon a hill commanding an unobstructed view of the entire city. Unpretentious, yet spacious and comfortable, are many of the homes built in an older architectural style, with great open arcaded verandas serving as living rooms in this tropical city. Social life in this thriving crown colony is always full and varied, with garden parties, dinners, races, sports meets, and dozens of other activities. A gathering place is Raffles Hotel, one of the most renowned hostelries in the East. At tiffin time, the midday meal hour, the veranda of this well-known rendezvous is always crowded with those who come to enjoy cooling drinks, fine music, and pleasant companionship. The colony proudly boasts of one of the finest and most modern swimming pools in all the East, the Singapore Swimming Club. Children as well as adults bathe in the cool, filtered seawater which flows continuously through the two spacious pools. <laughs> Devoted and loyal Chinese servants called Amas watch over and care for the European children. On the balconies of the clubhouse, 
or the terraces overlooking the peaceful waters, members and guests relax and enjoy the refreshing breezes which blow from the Straits of Malacca or the China Sea. Here on this tropical island, which was once but an impenetrable jungle, along the coast of which ships of the past sail with timidity, England has built a great city and established for the trade of all nations a mighty guardian in the east. 